Okay, so just gonna do a couple more things and I think I'm kind of done. Remember I could make this neater and tidier, but I'm just trying to throw some extra things in. Um, so maybe this base. Later on, I'd like this to kind of swivel around and seem kind of logical. I could, I could have to build more stuff on it, but whatever. Uh, what I want to do with this one here is, um, if I hit one, you can see it's all pretty much straight here. Um, what if I decide I want to break it someplace? So how about this? Um, let's go in and I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool, pop it in here. Now I have this strange sneaky suspicion that these things are of various lengths and I want them to be exact. So if I go in here to the split and I just went and switched to my move tool so I could get access to this, instead of relative, I'm going to switch it to absolute and I saw it twitch. It just moved a little bit right there. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to take this, uh, I'm going to go down here to the mesh tools and um, slide edge tool, middle click, slide it, slide it, slide it, whoop, right there. That's great right there. And then uh, I'm going to use that edge and I'm going to go to mesh, edit mesh and hit detach. Now these are two separate pieces now. Um, if I go in and I grab this and I hit mesh separate, you'll see that it separates into two pieces. Okay, and then I could take this one, maybe grab that edge, actually maybe put another edge whoop in, put the edge whoop right there. Okay, and then I'll go back and double click on this edge and I'll hit extrude, push it in a little bit. Okay, no one's going to see this, so they probably won't notice. And I'll add an extra division and when I press three uh, and I deselect and maybe turn off my wireframe, turn off me wireframe. You can see we've got a hard edge there, son. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab this and I'll grab that outside edge. I'm gonna hit extrude, pull it down a little bit. And I think they're probably gonna overlap, so that's great. Oops, I didn't mean to hit the offset. I was gonna put another division in here, there. Hit three and see how that looks. So now there's a funny little ridgy gap in there or something. Um, and I could, you know, do other things with this. If I go in here and I grab, say, that edge loop and that one, and maybe that one that I put in there, and I went and I hit average. Where's my average? I'm gonna make you all average. Hit G a few times, and now it's averaged it out, and it's kind of made it smoother. And then when I look at it, I go, okay. Let's hit one for a second, and I'll use the insert edge whoop tool again. Pop that in really close. And then when I hit three, that should hold the shape a little bit more. And now it looks like there's just a little groove in there. Um, I could cover that up too if I wanted to, but I'm gonna say it's good. So now anyway, two shapes. And maybe I'll just take that and delete the history. Okay, what was the other thing I wanna do? Oh, piston, piston! Um, so for the piston, here, let's just take all this stuff and I got it over here. I'm just gonna group it, control G. And when I group it, we'll call that geo underscore gerp. And um, I should probably delete the history on this stuff just in case there's history and I don't know about it. Anyway, should be okay. Um, now the piston, let's take the group by the way, geo group and I think, is it this one? No, it's this one. And I'm just gonna take it all and uh, Actually, I can delete the layer and I can create a fresh one. And that means that the geo group is on here. So anything that goes into the geo group automatically goes into layer geo underscore layer. Great. Oh, I put a dash. I meant to hit underscore there. Okay, everything's well labeled. <sighs> and now I can hide this. Um, I want to make some kind of piston thing. And so when I make the piston thing, let's go and use a uh, cylinder and I'll just take this thing and I'm gonna hold actually so we'll use sections of eight and I'm just gonna hold down I'll make a duplicate and I'll hold down J there and uh, let's just take this and we'll move it up a wee bit there and let's just scale it out okay something like this so I want to make some kind of shape that kind of an intersection of these two things. But before I do anything like that, um, a smart idea would be to take this and put some subdivisions in. So if I use the insert edge loop tool, pop it in, and it's not perfectly centered, I could move it and snap it, but I can also go over here, instead of relative, I can go to multi, 
And probably if I put in three divisions, there'll be one right in the middle, and that's right around the edge there. Oh yeah. Here, so there I can do it this way too. Grab an edge, hold down control, right click, edge ring, edge ring and split. And then just hit this and hit G and hit G. And I've done the exact same thing two different ways. Okay. And I, uh, I just want to uh, right around there. Okay, so <clears throat> now if I take these, think about how these are going to clean up. Uh, let's see how it goes. Actually, I'm going to pull this down a bit. And you know what? I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller, and I think it'll, it might work better. Take these two, and I'm going to go here to uh, Mesh, Booleans, Union. And then I got to do some cleaning here. Um, so let's see right up in here. I'm just going to take this thing. I'll delete the history. And then I want to get all these points over here. I want to do some clean up there. Okay, so I'm just going to get that freaking target weld tool. Make sure nothing's selected. Dook, dook. Yeah, it's good. Dook. Dook. Okay, anything funny over there? No. Dook, dook. I could mirror this afterwards too, but whatever. It's just as fast for me to zip around and quickly snap all these things and merge them in. Okay, great. And then I'm going to switch to my multi cut tool. I'm going to multi cut myself from here to here. Okay. And there. Goody, 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 goody. Um, I can take this edge out of here and that one, and this one, and this one, and I'll just delete them. And there, I've got these things, and they look like they're relatively welded together well. I'm just going to hit three and just double check, make sure there's nothing funny going on. Everything looks nice. Very nice. Um, just delete my history. And I can get my insert edge loop tool out. Actually, I'm going to use insert edge loop. Oh, and just there we go. I could mirror this afterwards too if I wanted to, so I don't have to get too carried away. Okay, and then right in here, um, I could insert edge loops or maybe even just go back and grab this edge here. Is that the one? When I hit one, eh. I kind of like the idea of taking this one and uh, hitting with a bevel. I'm curious. And the bevel wasn't happy. Segments of two, fraction. Doesn't even say it wanted to do anything. I'm just going to undo the bevel. What if I grab this edge loop? Do I have anything funny on? Nope. Okay, let's try it again here. Bevel. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get too carried away by this right now. I'm just going to say it's fine. And when I hit three. Okay. And that looks fine to me. <clears throat> Actually, I'm curious if I take this edge here and this one here. Aha, I think there's an end gone. There is an end gone, just one over here. Pew. Okay, so let's go back to edges. Select that edge and select that one. It's kind of curious if I go in here and hit edit edge flow if it does anything for me. No, I don't like that. Undo. Um, so get that in, that in. And you could sit here and do fancy things to this. If I grab this, I grab to faces to faces, and I extrude, and I just scale that down, and I do it again. Okay, so I got some kind of fancy kind of shape. Okay. And you can totally go in here and grab these faces and hit extrude and uh, right now it's on local. If I switch to global, I can just pull it down. I'll hit one as I do this. Okay. And, um, yeah, I should be good. Okay. So I've got an interesting part. Um, then what I can do is just hold down D and V there, bring this up. And let's see what it looks like with the rest of the pieces here. Okay, it's a little bit big. Um, let's go and take this and scale it down. And I gotta figure out a way to maybe wedge it in. 
Okay, so I might find some way to make it look like it's part of this somehow. I'll think about it. I could just even just like plop it in and make it smaller and then make it look like it's part of it, whatever. Actually, what if I do this? And... Oh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Here, let's scale that this way. Okay, I might, again, I'll come up with something and I could cut a shape out of this or something. Um, then I'm gonna make a duplicate, take the duplicate and I'll bring it down here and I'm gonna hold down J and you might come up with a million different ways of doing this. Um, I'm just gonna grab these faces, grab my scale tool, let's make these bigger. Okay. <clears throat> and that should be longer so I can say this part here kind of touches over here someplace. Um, so let's go and grab the rest of this unit and pull that down. And actually, I'm just going to take it when it's here. I think I'm going to freeze the transformations. It's going to make it easier to rig it up later on. And I'll pop that here so it's straight up and down. And then this one here, probably got to grab these vertices, pull them down. And we will make them, uh, when I rig them later on, I'll make them aim at each other. I'll freeze the transforms on this one too. <clears throat> actually, if I get right here. Oh, and I forgot I was going to do that mirror cut thing. If I just go over and hit the mirror, boop, there, it made it so it's the same on both sides. Hit three just to double check, make sure it didn't weld any vertices by accident or anything like that. And I'll hit one, and I might decide I have to put more in, so I'll take this, I'll do the same thing. I just what, I mirrored it across. Okay, and I can take these and duplicate them, put a couple in, I can have another one that goes from here to here or something like that, right? Um, later on, I'm going to make these aim at each other, but I'm going to be using a rigging method of doing it. Um, <clears throat> if you want to see what it looks like, here, I'll take this and I'll take this. Uh, just for this moment, I kind of like them that they're lying straight up and down. It's going to make my life easier for rigging. But eventually what I'm going to do is if I make sure that the pivot point's this way and this one's this way. Oh, and the pivot point on this one is too high, so i got to go down here and pull this in right in there. Okay, great. And if I take this one and this one, and I go into, we go into rigging later on, we're gonna go to constrain. By the way, I've frozen these both out so I can get back really, really quickly. I'm gonna make them aim, and I'm gonna make it aim in the aim vector of one in this direction in the Y. I'm gonna zero that, and I'll worry about these things later on. So now this one is going, oh, it's going off in the wrong direction, up vector there. Well, maybe we should undo that. And if I hit Z and I undo it, um, up vector here, if I go in and I take a look at this one, aim vector will make that negative one, hit apply, there. And then I select this one, hold down shift, select this one last, and I hit uh, this one here, I'll make that positive one. And when I hit apply, bloop, it points at that one. Um, we've got a problem with the up vector, it looks like, and that's when I have to go in here and do some fancy stuff, but, um, you get the general idea. And if I close this and I take a look at these two cylinders, they've got these things here, this and this. I'm just gonna delete those out of here. I can just take these two things. If I hold down J, there, so you can, are oh, you bastard? There, you can kind of see what I'm looking at. Um, and I could put those in in a couple different places. You could even group them and kind of look at them and check them out, whatever you wanna do, just in case you don't know what I mean. Uh, take the, these two things, make a duplicate, make a group. I'm just going to isolate this pivot point. If I take this and I hold down D and V, doop, 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 book, there, D and V, there. Now I've made this group and I can take the group and let's do something like say this with it. Move it over here and here someplace, I don't know, something kind of interesting up in here. And I might have to do some modifications on this. Uh, if I grab these vertices and I want to move them <coughs> up along this line, um, where is it? If I go into the move tool, there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm trying not to do this with hotkeys. I can hit 
edit pivot and I can line it up with that edge. And then I can take these. Okay, this is good. Turn off edit pivot. And now I can move those vertices up along here. As soon as I let go, it typically switches back. But if I do the same thing here, um, what if I went in edit pivot, lined it up with that edge, um, then turned off edit pivot, and then I can move it. There we go. Or I could have just uh, gone in and used the rotate tool, but I didn't. Grab these vertices up in here, edit pivot, and then bring, oh, and then I got to turn edit pivot off, and then I can pull it back. Anyway, I'll figure out some way to kind of weld this into here or something like that, make another Boolean or something. Um, but, <clears throat> actually, let's try that. God damn it. Edit pivot, line up, push, 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 turn this off. Okay, and maybe I'll Boolean this afterwards when no one's looking. Okay, and I'll call that good enough for now. And what do we got? 16 minutes, so I'm going to stop video here. I should do some hard surfacing to these pistons as well, but whatever. Okay, stop.